Hello everyone. So today we're going to take a quick look at how PW6 enables um, creation of REST services of RESTful web APIs that can be consumed by web, mobile, and enterprise applications. Um, we're going to look at an example where um, there is a customer schema definition um, that has to be uh, used um, in order to design the web API. So. Uh, let's get started. Uh, I'm going to create a simple PW application. I'm going to call it com.foo.rest simple. Um, so the wizard creates the application and the application module. The first thing I'll do is I would import the schema definition into the project so that I've got the business object that I have to create um, a web API out of. So uh, importing is as simple as dragging and dropping the schema definition of the schemas folder. Um, I can see the customer.xsd right there. And what I'm going to now do is um, I can create a REST service by clicking on the process. Um, and REST services are uh, stateless by definition. So um, I change the property type of the process to stateless. And I can see that um, the third icon uh, shows create REST service. So I'm going to click on that. It brings up a visit. Um, it asks me for configuration details around the REST service. So I'm going to call it my customer service. It is, um, I'm going to edit the documentation about the new customer service. The resource path is great. It's slash customer. I'm going to, this is a single um, object. So I'm going to call it a single resource instead of a collection of resources and in the resource schema um, I'm gonna I'm gonna select the customer uh, schema definition so great I just want to create a post and get operation um, on this resource um, clicking on next takes me to the detail screen the, the default uh, the default values look good I'm gonna click finish and uh, click on finish takes me to the the wizard generates a simple process definition so I can see that the activities uh, inside the get and post activities um, I've got to map the reply messages so doing that is as simple as clicking on the input um, I can see that there is a customer element so what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to really mirror the input to the output so I'm going to map the customer to customer uh, that takes care of that um, there is a customer object and for the time being for, there is a customer object that is required by the get operation for the time being I'm just gonna you know, I'm feeling lazy so I'm just um, hard coded to something um, this could be the query result of a database lookup or a um, or another web service for all we know so that's great um, the project is completed um, it, it validates fine, there are no problems. Um, and what I'm going to do is let me fire up the debugger. So um, that's all I've done. I've again imported the schema into the project. Um, I've created a uh, stateless process. I've uh, launched a REST wizard in three clicks. I have the REST, um, RESTful Web API um, up and running. Um, the I can find out the uh, a nice little documentation UI is available out of the box. I can use the lresdoc doc command in the um, OSJ console to load it up. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and load up the web UI. There you go. This is the web UI um, that allows you to um, not just look at the input and output of the web API, but also test it. So Let's do a get customer um, and that queries a service and returns the uh, result um, of the operation. Um, again, there are a lot of more sophisticated functionality um, built into this. Uh, for instance, I can um, I'm gonna I'm gonna shut down the debugger, going over to the modeling environment. Um, I can look at the components. Um, the components involve the processes that are starting up. So you can see that the customer component has a REST service binding 
uh, defined there. Within the binding, I could enable things like I can enable both JSON and XML serialization, but also I can do things like um, adding uh, response codes. So uh, I'm going to click on adding custom ex response codes. These are um, these are various successful, um, you know, sort of these indicate successful running of the um, of the process of successful outcome of the API. Um, and I could also define things like parameters um, in the um, as part of the binding. So um, let's do a quick project clean. It, it forces the project to clean up um, and build it. Um, and then what we'll do is um, we'll run the debugger again. I'm gonna right here as part of the process definition. Uh, launch a debugger. The application again um, comes up. The debug environment. Um, I can see that, let me arrange the UI a little bit. It's great, the application is up and running. Um, I can see that the um, operations are now accessible, not just via um, JSON, but also uh, through XML. But not, not just that, I also see the custom status codes that I've just configured in my REST binding. All of this with zero lines of code, with just a few clicks, drag and drop um, activities. All right, that concludes the demo. Um, this again demonstrates only the key features of the REST binding and how easy it is to create RESTful web APIs in just a few clicks. Um, for more questions and comments and feedback, please um, post them on uh, on Tibber. Um, the subject is products, business works, business work six. Thank you.